On the DMC-75, we take a raw aluminum block and turn it into an aerospace component. This first operation runs for roughly six hours and is where the majority of the work takes place. To begin roughing, we rotate the table 90 degrees and start machining the outside of the part. For these cuts, we're using a half inch roughing end mill from Helical, running at full depth of cut at two and three quarters with an 80 thousandths of an inch step over. Since we're removing a lot of material on this part, I chose to use an end mill instead of a shell mill to improve chip evacuation. This roughing process is repeated on all sides of the part while strategically leaving material in the center to maintain stability. I'm walking a fine line. If I remove too little material, internal stress can warp the part. If I remove too much, the part loses rigidity, sacrificing surface finish and accuracy. At this stage, roughing is a careful balance of speed, strategy, and precision, laying the foundation for everything that comes next. Once a bulk of the material is removed, we move on to finishing all the features on the outside of the part. I'm especially careful during this stage, using multiple finishing passes to ensure these faces come out clean and consistent. After the outside surfaces are complete, we drill and tap several holes so we can move on to machining the inside of the part. Given the thin, tall geometry, we'll be using this high feed mill from PH Horn. To remove the remainder of this material, this high feed mill has really low radial forces and really high axial forces. We're getting exceptional surface finishes even though we're just roughing. Using a tapered quarter inch ball end mill from Harvey, we're going to finish these complex 3D surfaces. So I designed a 3D print with heat set inserts. I attached this to my part before my roughing and finishing tool paths to add more rigidity and dampen the load of my tool. After the windows are finished, we'll deburr and reach areas we couldn't access before. The final step in operation one is separating the finished part from the base material, leaving a 10,000 inch tab. This cuts our second operation down to about 15 minutes. To support the part, we have a 3D printed filler block to reduce vibrations and improve surface finishes. We'll be utilizing four M4 screws to hold on to our entire part. There are neat probing cycles that allow me to locate the part even at odd angles. I can accurately probe features that were done in operation one. I rough out the bulk of the material with a quarter inch bull nose end mill. With my weak work holding in mind, I slow down my feed. With very little geometry left, I finish the surfaces, drill and tap a few holes, and I have a good part. To verify our part, we're inspecting it on a Zeiss CMM, or coordinate measuring machine. Even though the part may look flimsy, all faces are flat within 0.02 millimeters, and the hole locations are well within 0.1. By strategically removing just enough material, building complex fixtures and setups, you too can make parts like this. If you found this video interesting, subscribe to our channel to see more machining, aerospace, and behind the scenes content.